Hello, I'm Landon Schlangen, and today we're going to go through the intermediate algorithm scripting challenges on FreeCodeCamp. Let's just get right into it. First challenge. Sum all numbers in a range. For this scripting challenge, we want to add up all the numbers, including these two numbers, all the numbers, including the ones in between them. So it would add up 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, and that should return 10. And it doesn't matter what order they're in just grab all the numbers in between them and add them up. So I think what I'm gonna start with is grabbing the smaller number. So I know where to start with the with the for loop. So we'll do let smaller equal array zero less than array one. And if that's true, then I want smaller to equal array zero. If that's not true, then I want it to equal array one. So that will grab the smaller number out of these two and assign it to this variable. And I also want to do the same thing for largest or for the larger number. So I just change this to larger and we can just change this to greater than and then that'll grab the larger number. Now we, we want want our for loop so we'll do a for let i equal the smaller number i less than the uh, less than or equal to the larger number and then i plus plus and then we'll have a total variable equal to zero at the start and we'll do total plus equals i and then return the total at the end and i think that should work it doesn't matter what order it's in because it'll always grab the smaller and the larger and then when we do our for loop we start at the smaller number and we add that in all the way up to the larger number and we add that in as well because it's less than or equal Let's uh, console log this quick just to be sure. So yep, that's giving us 10. If we did 5 and 10, it'll give us 45. So it should work. Let's try it. Yep. So we diff two arrays. So for this challenge, we want to find the difference between these two arrays and return it. So in this case, this array doesn't have the number 4 in it. So this function should return an array with just four in it. If it was say five, six on the end here, then this function should return five and or four and six in an array like this. So I'm definitely gonna have to loop through them. I'll probably have to use a nested for loop for this one. So let's write those out quick here. Four let i equal zero, i less than array one dot length i plus plus, and then do another for loop except with array two dot length. Let j equal zero, j less than array two dot length j plus plus. Open that up. And then we wanna check, so we're gonna start with one and we're going to check if one is in this array if it is then we're going to not push it on and then we'll move on to the second one check that that's in this array if it is then we're gonna not push it on so we'll go let item equal array one i and then we're gonna go if item equals array two i or j actually i wonder if we should use a filter method so in the case of a filter method we could do let array equal array two dot filter and then for each array two item we want to check if array two item is not equal to item i'm going to see what that returns console.log array so in the first one it filtered out one and then it filtered out two and then it filtered out three and then five what if we set it as equal, then it would be one, two, three, and five because they're all in it. If we had seven here, then it would be empty for that one. Okay, we gotta have an answer variable at the start here. The answer will equal an empty array at the start, and then we want to push onto it. Answer.push our array, console.log answer. So yeah, that equals one, two, three, and five. We gotta change up what happens in here. So right now it should return four, six, and seven. We could maybe do if array dot length equals zero, then we know that it's not in there and we can answer dot push the item. So that would be seven. Otherwise we don't want to push anything. So now we have seven, but we want to grab four and six out of this one as well. So to do that, maybe we can just copy this for loop again and then change some things. So we'll do array two this time and array two here and we'll do array one here, array one item. And there we go, we have seven, four, and six, which should be right. And then we can return our answer. And I'll get rid of these console logs and I'll just console log answer. So yeah, seven, four, and six should be right. So we have two for loops, uh, one so we can go through all array one items and then the second one so we can go through all of array two items. And we kind of do the same thing for both of them. If that item isn't found, then we push that item on. So let's try this out. And sweet, it worked. Seek and destroy. For this challenge, we have to get rid of all twos and threes in this array and return the items that are left. If this was a one, then we would have to get rid of all the ones and threes. So we have to use the arguments object for this one. So that's done with 
Can we just put args here or dot 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 args? I'm gonna try console logging that. Okay, yeah, so we get an array of our arguments. The first one is gonna be our array that we take out of. So we wanna loop through that. So we'll go for but i equals zero, i less than args zero dot length i plus plus. So that's looping through this array. And then we need to check how many arguments we have after that. And I think to do that, we can just do let amount equal args dot length minus one. So that would be two in this case, because I think we need to do another for loop in here. Uh, let's try it for let j equal zero, j less than amount j plus plus. So this will run two times for each thing. And we want to check if this is one or three. If it is, then get rid of it. So we'll go if args i, if arg zero, i equals args j plus one because we're getting everything after the zero index so that would be one and three which is in the second and third index or the first and the second index so if that if this is a one or three then we want to skip it it's if it's not a one or a three but we have to do it if it equals unless we do it should be similar to the other one we were doing let's try console logging something let's console log args zero i so yeah that's one three one three which is right if this is true then we're going to push onto an array that we declare up here or we can even do let in equal or let let contains equal false and then if this is true then we'll set contains to true and then we'll have another if statement if contains or if doesn't contain then we want to push on to our array so we'll have an answer array up here and we'll do answer dot push and we'll push in our args zero i and then we'll return our answer at the end and let's console log our answer here so that's giving us two two three two two three i might have to put this inside of this if statement no i know why it's doing it maybe i have to put it outside of this inner for loop that could be it no now we're just getting two and two. Oh well, yeah we should be getting just two and two yeah, that's right, because we're taking out all the ones and threes. If we add a five and a six on here, then it'll add five and six. So yeah, this should work. So again, this dot 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 args is an array of all of our arguments. To grab the amount of arguments after this first array, we just do args dot length minus one, and then we do a for loop on this array, and we set contains equals false, and then we do another for loop for the rest of the arguments. And we check if this one number is equal to the numbers in the rest of the list, which is one or three in this case. And if it, that's true, then we set contains equal to true. And then after this for loop runs, then we check if contains equals false, then we'll push it on. So in this case, we would not push one on, but we would push two on because two is not equal to one or three. And that's how we get our answer. So let's try it out. Yep, cool. Wherefore art thou? For this challenge, we have to return the object in the array that re that has this key value pair in it. So in this case, last capulet is part of this object in the in the array. And so we want to return this full object in the function. So I think we can use filter here. We'll do array.filter. Wait, no, not array.filter. We'll set array equal to collection.filter. Hopefully this will work. We'll have our object and we're gonna check. Man, we don't know what the keys are. So we have to do object.keys. We'll do object.keys on our collection and we'll set that to a variable of keys and console log it quick. I'll just return that. So yeah, that's zero, one, and two. What? Oh, duh. We should actually do object.keys on a map or even on a for each. So collection dot for each for each object, just console log object dot keys and then object. So yeah, that's first and last, first and last, first and last. And there's gotta be an easier way to do this. What if we just do if object equals source? So in that case, it's not because none of these equal this, obviously. So I think I'm gonna use a for loop here, like an actual for loop, and then I'll use another for loop. So here's, I have my second for loop, and then I wanna check if the collection, collection i, so one of these objects, and then I want to grab first and last, which would be the object keys j, and I wanna check if that equals this, if that equals source, and then object keys j as well. And then if that's true, then I want to do array.push our collection i. And I can get rid of this stuff here. Let's try console logging this, see if it's right. It looks right right now, so that's cool. I just don't know if it'll work for all of them. 
but I can definitely try that. So we're going through each object in this collection and we're grabbing its keys with object.keys on that object. So in this case it would be first and last. And then we go through first and last with the second for loop and we check if this collection, if this collection item, if it's first, so which would be Romeo, if that equals this last Capulet. In this case it doesn't and it would only check if last Montague is equal to last Capulet. And in this case, Montague and Capulet are not equal. So it just moves on to the next one until it gets to the last one and it sees that Capulet and Capulet are the same. In that case, it pushes on to our array and then we return our array. So this was a kind of long one. Let's try it. Uh, works for a couple. <laughs> Darn. Oh, I know why. It's because there's more than one thing in this. So I think I'm going to copy one of these over. So yeah, this is obviously false, or this is not right. I'm going to grab our source keys. So let's source keys equal object.keys on our source. And then I might need another for loop, because I have to go through each one and check if they're both equal. Maybe I have to use object.has own property. So in this case, it would be, I want to check if source has the properties of this, or the, yeah, the keys. So I'll try getting rid of this and going source dot has own property and then we'll do object keys no okay so i had to use a hint for this one and i'm on the right track with grabbing the source keys but uh i have to use the filter method for sure so i'm going to get rid of that and we're going to do source keys dot length and we're also going to use the filter method so we're going to do collection dot filter collection dot filter each object or a collection object collect whole object and we're going to put our for loop inside of that and then we're going to have an if statement of if our whole object that has own property of our source keys i if it doesn't have that or if it doesn't have the actual value so to do that we have to check if our whole object of the source keys i does not equal our source of source keys i and then if that returns true, then we actually want to return false here. Otherwise, we'll return true. And we'll return true outside of the for loop. And there we go. And that works. We get apple one, bat two, and apple one, bat two, cookie two. So yeah, this one was pretty tough. Let's uh, just move on. <laughs> what? Seriously? What is this giving me? Oh, I think I need a bracket here. No, wait, yeah, I do. I just had the brackets mixed up. So now it should work. Yep, there we go. Spinal tap case. So we want to we want to take a string, any string, and give it this format of all lowercase with dashes in between. So this is definitely a regular expression problem, and we want to grab our string and do dot replace on it, and we want to replace every thing that is not a word so we can do backslash uppercase w and we want to replace it with a dash but then we also want to have it be lowercase so we'll actually do let lower equal string dot to lowercase and actually do it on that and then we'll return lower let's console log this quick um it's not replacing it with a dash maybe i need it to be global no oh I think I have to have it equal a different variable. So I'll do answer and then I'll return answer and also console log it. So there we go. This dash is dash spinal dash tap. Should work. And I definitely need the G there to make it global. So let's try this out. It gets a couple of them. So I'm guessing backslash W won't grab the underscores. Oh man. And this one. Oh, and this one. The uppercase letters. Shoot. Um. So we don't want to make it lowercase right away then. In this case, we'll probably do let a red a equal string dot split split every character and then we'll do for i less than array dot length i plus plus and then we'll go if this character so array i if our regular expression dot matches on it or dot uh test backslash w or a through z uppercase if that then we could just maybe add a space in between them wait i want to check if it's not a wait no yeah if it is a through z because mm. if we add a through z in here that's obvious yeah we don't want to do that you know what i can do actually i can use replace up here too i can do let new string equal string dot replace and we want to replace all a through z uppercase with a character plus a space and we actually want to grab all lowercase as well and then we can do this trick with regular expressions where you put parentheses around them and, we, and then we can use dollar sign one and then put a space in between and then do dollar sign two so let's see what that gives us let's say this is 
without spaces. Then it puts spaces in, in, in to it. And then we can make it lowercase. And then we want to replace all white space. We want to replace all underscores. And will it work now? Wait, no. Maybe put it in brackets. No. What if I did or? underscore okay there we go that might work so i have a if i have an underscore in here yep then it uh turns it into this so that's awesome okay i think this will work let's just get rid of these console logs here so first we handle cases like this by putting a space in between the lowercase and capital letters and then we turn it all to lowercase and then we replace all the spaces and the underscores with a hyphen so let's try that sweet okay i think that was the last one for today Next up, we'll pick up with Pig Latin. But yeah, that's it for me today. Hope you liked it. Hopefully I didn't look too dumb. I used a couple of hints. But yeah, thanks for watching and see you later.